All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Kevin with our favorite, my favorite partner in crime, Monsignor Gillis. Cheers to you. Hey, everyone. Hi. Oh. All right, it was great coffee, Monsignor. Oh, Put a delish. lot of work in that. Yes. Work. <laughs> <One hoop. laughs> right, well, well, why don't we start off with a prayer, and then we will get into to what we're going to discuss today. Excellent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, our Father, we are thankful for the gift of new beginnings, always in you and your Son, Jesus, in the church, in the beginning of this new year. Help us to live life to the full, to receive everything you wish to give us. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. the Son, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So Monsignor Gillis and I, were we were talking and thinking, and we're like, you know what? With Christmas coming and everything else, well, now when you guys watch this, Christmas will be have come and gone. Yes. But we're like... So what can we do this podcast on? Well, it's obviously it's boots in the ground, uh, boots on the ground Catholicism, and we thought about what can we do to give you guys some motivation. You're probably in the midst of your uh, New Year's re resolutions, so we came up with Monsignor Fortitude. So New Year's resolutions, um, but I want to back this up just a little bit, like I tend to want to do. Um, so. And we talk about uh, everybody's got resolutions and, well, not everybody, but that's kind of like January 1st is everybody gets all gung-ho. I don't know, as a kid, do you remember, was that a big deal for you? For me, it was. As a younger Every man, that was a big kind of a deal every year it's like i'm gonna restart i we're gonna do something seven even before I even was really even faithful i just yeah it was about that restart that fresh of the year i'm going to you know whether it was usually getting on a diet eat healthier yeah. I'm work out and then as i've gotten older now too like spiritual life i'm going to spend more time with my wife or kids or whatever it wants to be really it, it is amazing that even in secular culture there are there is this big deal about starting over again. Yep. Um, that's kind of an attractive, there's something in the guts that's attractive about that because I think a lot of us want to start over again. Right. right. Well, uh, well, and, and well, you, you were talking to me earlier about where January really comes from. Why don't you kind of, why don't we start there? Of like, why, how did this all came to be? Why, you know, sure. why January? So I'm not an expert at the Greek gods or whatever, or the Latin gods, but I'll just give it my best shot. So the uh, January is the first month of the new year, and the name, if I recall correctly, takes itself from the god Janus, or Janus, J-A-N-U-S, from which word we get the word January. And the god Janus was the god of two faces. So he had one looking forward, the other face was looking backward. And so that's why the month of January stands at the head of the civil secular calendar year is because you kind of have one, you're looking backward from where you just came and then you got a face looking forward to maybe where you want to go. So that kind of ties in uh, neatly with the topic at hand, which is making resolutions, beginning over again, starting over. Um, you look at maybe what has happened in the past year, and maybe we haven't grown, or uh, maybe think we get sloppy, we get tired, and and maybe then you you want an excuse to start over again. And I think that's why January resolutions are really even popular in the secular culture as well. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, how long do they, what's their staying power? How long do they last? Right. And and by the time this episode's coming out, mid-January, people are like, ah, oh, they've kind of fallen off the bandwagon. They're not using that gym membership as much. They're not coming in to pray as much in the church. And, and it, mm -hmm. you know, it's also a hard time of the year, too, because let's be honest, it's the dead middle of winter. It's mm -hmm. cold outside. Days are still short. Yeah. And it's hard to really push yourself through that. So um, like you and you and I were talking b b before this show, um, uh, we were talking about in order to, to give up something, you got to replace it with something good. 
with something positive. So if you're going to give up, you know, let's say scrolling through your phone and on, on YouTube, you, you got to put something positive in there, whether it's mm -hmm. a good spiritual book, prayer, or I'm going to intentionally spend more time with my kids or my spouse mm -hmm. or something. You have to replace it with something. Otherwise, you're going to replace it with another bad thing. Right. No, I completely agree with that. Uh, find something that fills fills you up. And maybe that's why we do some of the bad things we do is because we're actually seeking to try to find the good, but we're, we're using the wrong things to do that, and we stop short. And, and so we maybe do the quick, easy fixes, whether it's too much food, too much drinking, too much uh, scrolling on the phone. We're looking for something more, but we try to fill up the emptiness with things that don't fill us up and just leave us more empty. Well, and I think I think a lot of things too because I so and I'll get more into this is later is I've I've done Exodus ninety three times and I've it's been brutally hard. And I and I realized my my problem beforehand, which I'm also going to be doing Exodus 90 starting January 1st. So maybe for so, our so, viewers who don't know what it yes. is, what is Exodus so, 90? So Exodus 90 is basically an entire purification of your soul, realizing where you're weak. It's basically yeah, a couple of seminarians had come up with this uh, rigorous program where you um, read pretty much all the way through Exodus. You know, it's the Israelites basically going out into the desert mm -hmm. and they didn't have anything and they, all their gods were taken away from them, their vegetables, food, everything. They had to rely completely on Christ. So that's basically what you're doing as well, too, except I'm not going out into the desert. It's more of a spiritual desert. So uh, no, mm -hmm. no phone unless it's for work. Um, no snacking, no sweets, uh, no meat on Wednesday and Fridays, cold showers, um, getting seven, eight hours of sleep, exercising every day, going to uh, daily mass, getting a holy hour in. So it's a lot of, a lot of those things where it's like, I, you know, no sweet drinks. So like only black coffee, water or tea. Um, it, so it's, it's really purging those things to become fully alive into Christ and your family. And so, you know, so I live my glutton in this life all the way to December. And in January 1st, I, I try to turn this switch on. It only lasts a couple of weeks and then I fall completely apart and I mm. actually resent it and I can't stand it. I'm in a worse spot than I was. Right. Thing. So so what I had learned is, is, is somebody really intelligent told me, you need to start training before before you actually start the marathon. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So so I started to, to make my showers a little bit colder now starting this month. Um, I'm just, I'm not putting cream in my coffee anymore, drinking black coffee. You don't have to do big things, but just those small things to start up, to start training your body to be able to do the more intense things. And I think a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. They have this New Year's resolution thing where they're just going to flip a switch January 1st and everything's going to be hunky-dory and that just doesn't go that way. My sense a lot of times is that people will max out with their bad activities and behaviors because they know January 1st is coming mm -hmm. and they're just going to binge right up to the end and then mm -hmm. try to flip that switch. And that's not a very intelligent no. way to approach that. No, it's not. And, and, and I, I will say this. December is the hardest month to try to live virtue. I mean, you got, mm. I mean, you got Thanksgiving in November, but then like for somebody like that has a birthday in December, like me, I got my birthday and then I got, um, uh, you know, Christmas Eve, Christmas day, New Year's Eve. New Year, I mean, it, there's a lot of, there's a yeah. lot of, you know, yeah. celebrating party and, and for good reason, but it doesn't leave time for, it's hard to, to, what do I want to, to live virtue in those So, moments? and we mentioned the word at the very beginning of uh, fortitude, um, the virtue of strength. And maybe sometimes people think that strength is never failing, but I, I don't think that's real fortitude. Mm -hmm. I think real fortitude is accepting the human condition, but not just being content with it, but understanding who you are, that we are weak people, but we do have the capacity to become better people. And so if we do fall from grace, you don't just throw in the towel and, and wimp out and say, well, I might as well forget it. 
I think the the real virtue lies within getting up and struggling all over once again and, and tr getting up and trying all over. I, that's the key thing. Well, we've accepted this thing in the culture too, and I think it's spilt over into the uh, – the, the Christian culture a little bit, this idea that, that, oh, you know, I sinned, I failed, all I need to do is say sorry, and all is forgiven. Well, yes, all is forgiven, but you still, there's still a justice that that's owed. That's why we do penance. That's why mm. we, we, we say in our, you know, in our, conf in our confessions that we're going to amend our lives. Right. We're going to try to turn away from sin and go back and start, start on the path again. And, you know, and, and people think when they when they fail, they're starting over. No, you're not starting over. You're still right there. Where you've, it's just about getting up and keep moving and finishing the race. I, I love what you just said uh, because I was just about to go there in the sense of this is boots on the ground Catholicism. So this is not an individual marathon or activity or whatever you want to call it. But so how do we go together in our resolutions? Which really, I think, at the end of the day, is our desire to become holy. And uh, I think every resolution, uh, whether it's even spiritual or secular, ultimately, they will fail if it doesn't tend toward God. They're going to all fall short. So that's the number one thing is really, to, why are we doing this? For what purpose? For what end? And hopefully it's all measured against the horizon of eternity. But then what about our Catholic faith? Um, so I would say that we do this together, uh, that we are to be Christian of its nature means that we are in community. Our Catholic faith is awesome because we have so many ways of, of, of being helped in our journey uh, through the sacraments, through common worship and things of that nature. Yeah. Bible studies or whatever. Yep. yep. Well, and I think too, when you're doing a resolution or something like Exit 90 or something really intense and you're looking to really amend your life, you need to look around you and who's willing to run with you or walk mm -hmm. this journey with you because you, you're not, it's very hard to succeed on your own. And you may white knuckle it, but you're not actually really growing spiritually. You might, you might mm -hmm. have that, that, um, uh, fortitude, but, but you're eventually going to burn out of that because you need somebody to refuel you. You need to be refueled and and, and it, be held accountable to things. And and you need to surround yourself with the right people who can, uh, let's say, um, what are your motives for doing what you're doing? So if you're going through Exodus 90 and it's kind of really to um, feed your pride, mm -hmm. I don't think that's such a good thing. It's, no. not, it's mm -hmm. not achieving the, the real goal here. So hopefully you surround yourself with good men in this activity or whatever thing you do with good men and women or however that works out. And people can check you on on your your intentions. Well, and also too, like you, you, um, you got to get up and, and uh, <clears throat> live it every day, but also too, the, all these men that I'm doing it with, they're also thinking too, okay, day 91 as well too. Because there's no point of going through 90 mm. days of everything you just went through and try to grow closer to guy day 91 to convert the way you did in December. Right. You, you, this is kind of helping the new beginning of building good habits, good structure in your life so you can continue to move on. And, and I think one thing I really like about Exodus 90, it really encourages getting that seven, eight hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. It really encourages that mindfulness that I've already starting to learn in December here about being mindful of, okay, that's right. I don't have cream in my coffee. I don't, you know, my, my showers are going to be like, cool. but if you're, if you're tired and you're exhausted and you're not thinking clearly, you're, you're going to revert back to your old ways pretty quickly because mm -hmm. your body's just going to burn out and just wants to be comforted. When this Exodus 90, when do you actually start it? January 1st. Because since Easter, so it goes till Easter. So Easter is on uh, March 31st. It'll be those 90 days. Okay. So, so it just happens to line up with January 1st? Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. why this whole thing sp sparked. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing that it's the 90 days is mm -hmm. just... Mm -hmm. Lines up perfectly. Well, and and it found it. You know, here's the best part: found a group of guys at our church that all really want to do this and better their life, and they're doing it 
want to do it for the right reason. And it's great. We meet once a week. We talk about it. Here's our struggles. Here's what we're doing well at. And, you know, then it's like what I'm doing well at and somebody else might be struggling with it. You can help them, you know, through that, which I think is really great. And uh, it just it it really forms that brotherhood because it helps men mm. build respect for one another, and I think that's so mm. key in men's relationships. That I feel like I you know let's be honest, us as men, we way would rather be respected than liked. You know, true. Yeah, yeah, that's important to us. So. That sense of integrity. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, that's I congratulate you, men. That's awesome. I I applaud that. Yeah. I'm too much of a wimp. I have not yet signed on, uh, but maybe I'll find my way to do it too. Well, I'm just going to tell you this too, Monsignor. And Monsignor mm-hmm. knows my grumbling, and I probably have mentioned this on the podcast before. I could <laughs> not, I still cannot stand Exodus 90, you know? And I just, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, just, it just, it just grinds my gears knowing the fact I'm going to do this. But I have 100% peace at it. I know it's something I need to do. I think the reason why I'm so irritable and don't want to do it is because it's exactly what I need. Mm. And, and, and it touches upon all the areas I really need to grow. And and I think... Um, well, I told you before, too, I'm, I will support you. I'll check in with you, try to hold you accountable. And at the same time, I'm suspecting that... As you grow in virtue, that is really going to have a reverse effect, if you will, and challenge me to grow in virtue right. and to maintain fortitude or strength in whatever program or way of life that I'm trying to do it. Absolutely. So. You know, um, the, well, and like, uh, so my, my buddy Mike that, that is kind of helping me do this as well, too, he always says a really good quote that I, I really appreciate it. And I feel like a, uh, Americans and, and, and uh, first world um, culture, we're really good at, at either being gluttonous or being um, or fasting. We don't know how to actually feast to enjoy something for what it is, but then be done when it's done. Mm. We either overuse it and abuse it, or we just don't go anywhere near it. There's never mm. that like that middle ground where we can just have something, enjoy it, enjoy it for what it is, give thanks to God, and move on. Mm. It's either we weigh and all that, and I don't know. Do would you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think that's true. Uh, we swing from one end of the spectrum to the other, and I think maybe it touches upon this sense of self mastery, and the the goal of Exodus ninety, I believe, is this sense of discipline and self mastery. Um, which would teach you how to feast appropriately mm-hmm. in the moment, mm-hmm. um, kind of that via media, you know, the in-between way. So you know, I think that's very true. Mm-hmm. Um, the other word, too, we were talking talking a little bit earlier uh, with regard to uh, sobriety. You know, a lot of people hear that word and they think, you know, not, not doing drugs or alcohol. But if you look at that word in sacred scripture, Sobriety, to live a sober life, means to live your life in accord with the reality that's before you. So what is the reality that's before us? Well, the gift of human life, that God summoned us into existence intentionally, for a reason, on purpose, uh, with a plan that we should be with him for all of eternity. So the reality that's before us is uh, eternity. And I think if you and your men or whoever does whatever resolution, if you keep your eye on the prize and you're looking at that horizon of eternity, it ups the stakes in a good way because it gives you more of a reason to keep on fighting. For sure. And it takes and it gives everything a higher value. So if you give up, let's say, okay, I'm not going to have chocolate. Well, it's just not about giving up chocolate and, and grumbling about that. It's like I'm gaining mastery over this which is a strengthening of my core character. Right. So if you can't do the little things in life, how can you do the bigger things in yep, life? Yep, absolutely. No, I, I 100% agree. So. And, and um, man, I had a heck of a thought, and I lost it. Because mm. um, you were saying, because you, you, you were saying about, oh, that's it about uh, the eternal life and, and mm. the big picture of eternal life. And how, you know, I was saying with, with, with you this morning about, like, you know, I was asking Monsignor, why did you get up today? You know, mm. and really realizing t- today is about glorifying God. And if I can get up and glorify God with 
everything that I do and everything that I am, it's going to get me to that eternal life, mm. you know? And, and it's not just, it's not just in prayer and all the spiritual things to do, which is great. And you need those things, but glorifying God and how do I treat other people? Do I, do I grumble when Monsignor comes into my office about, gosh, what does he want now? You know, or, you know, or how do I, how do I treat that homeless person that, that it's sometimes I, you know, is, is, is just belligerent and everything else like that. How do I treat my spouse, my kids, everything I do, do I do it for the glory of God or do I do it to glorify myself? And and is everything a burden to me? So that- you know, I like what you're saying, and I, I think a lot of people struggle with that. So why do why do you why do you get up in the morning? For what reason? What do you get up for? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I was, I'm just doing more and more ministry, I, I think I think people struggle with that understanding mm-hmm. their purpose in life. And getting lost in this, and I think it's a younger person problem. Quite honestly, mm-hmm. I, not that it I, can't affect everybody, but you well, get lost easily. Oh, easily because you're not sober anymore. Because you're you're trying to put too much on your plate. I mean, let's be honest, us Americans, as much as we can cram into our day, like we try to cram as much stuff as we can, and. My wife and I are just as guilty about that as the next person. Oh, we have 30 minutes free. Gosh, let's cram a 45 minute thing into it, Mm. you know, because it's all about being busy and that's how we feel accomplished by doing Mm. things. But are we actually like sober in the moment to sit there and take a look back? Like, hey, you know what? Doing this, we're neglecting X, Y, and Z, our own health, Mm -hmm. our kids, our sobriety, our marriage, or whatever else it is too. Mm -hmm. So I I think Elizabeth and I... He made a really awesome pact and really doing a good job of sticking to it of like uh, the weekends and Advent, we're not doing anything. We're going to we're going to spend time with the family. Mm -hmm. We're going to grow that. And I I want my kids to remember Advent being Advent. And it's a time of uh, patiently waiting for the Lord to come. Mm. And not this busy hustle and bustle, everything's stressed, and nobody enjoys anything, and then you have Christmas, and it's one day of relaxing, and then it's like back to the grind. It's like, well, no, they missed the whole point of Christmas then. No, that's fair. That's great words of wisdom, great so, thing to live by for sure. So, I mean, um, we've only done it one year, and I only got a lifetime <laughs> left, so <laughs> I suppose you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so. Yeah, well, good. Do you... Uh, do you have any other wor- words of wisdom in this this uh, mm-hmm. ending the Christmas season, going back into ad- we'll probably what be in um, uh, ordinary time for a couple weeks? Yeah, but around <laughs> just four. It's kind of scary that um, Ash Wednesday will be here before you know it. But um, you know, I guess my thought is to say that um, I hope it doesn't sound too cliche, but Never get up. There's always a new beginning. There's always a new possibility in Christ. And don't look so much to yourself for the new beginning, but find that new beginning in Jesus. And when the two of you are, when Jesus starts over with you and you with him, and then the two of you commit to starting over with people around you, you know, it just creates a a much more positive sense of energy and purpose. So I guess that'd be my my thought and and that's that's really good i um i wanted to uh uh, say and just reiterate too so when you when we're going back into this ordinary time um you know and you're feeling stagnant whatever it's that remember two things you know ask yourself why did i get up today what is my purpose what is my mission we've talked about it plenty of times in, in this in this podcast, what is my mission inside the mission? What is God calling me to do to and what do I need to do today to either better myself or my for God, my my spouse or future spouse, my vocation, my kids, whatever it is. Mm. And two, start, start thinking to yourself, Ash Wednesday is coming up. What do I need to do to get, to get rid of my life or add into my life to grow closer to Christ mm. and to glorify God? And, and when I give that thing up, what do I need to get rid of? What do I need to add into my life to so I don't have this thing of emptiness? And uh, yeah, and and, and also too, when I'm adding something into my life, what do I need to let go so I can make time to fully be enlivened to whatever I'm adding into my life? 
like that concept to, to glorify God and even to ask yourself, what does that mean? What does that really mean for for me to glorify God with my life? That'd be a good yeah. spiritual thing to contemplate before you hit Ash Wednesday. Yeah. And even, you know, and, and have these discussions with people, your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. You know, and that way you get some excitement going into you get these some things. Excitement going, yeah. And also, too, maybe you might find out that somebody else is trying to do the same thing you are, and you can work together mm-hmm. at it, and you can, you know, kind of team up on it. I guess that's the big thing, accountability. Um, and so the Sacrament of Reconciliation is great, of course, but... Jesus, I think, wants us to, uh, he wants to work through us by working with one another. And um, so accountability through another human person is good, accountability partner. So that, yeah. I, I would highly recommend that, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. Well, good deal. Well, yeah. Well, thank you for another episode of yeah, Copy of Kevin. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. This is good. Yeah, good, yeah. And uh, St. Right. Joseph the Workman. Pray for us. Pray for us. us. Take care.